what is the one proven way to ace the MCAT, right? Now, I'm sure if you're at this point where you're watching the video, there's probably lots of people that will tell you different ways to ace the MCAT. And honestly, I'm not one to say that one person is wrong, another person is right, and blah, 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 blah. No, there are obviously multiple ways to pass the MCAT. But the general theme that I've seen across the board, what worked for me, what worked for a lot of my colleagues, is practice. And notice how I said practice and not studying. Two different things, right? When someone says they, you need to study for the MCAT, a lot of people are reading textbooks, they're watching videos, they're looking back at notes, you know, maybe um, contacting professors or other friends who've done the same. I get it, you want to study, and generally speaking, it's okay to study. Nothing wrong with studying for the MCAT, and that's a general term that a lot of us use. However, what I've realized is a lot of people put a lot of focus on studying for the MCAT as opposed to practicing for the MCAT. Practicing for the MCAT means you're taking tests, you're taking question banks, you're taking practice problems, and you're um, going for those problems. You're answering it, whether you're getting it correct or you're getting it incorrect, but you're actually reviewing what you've practiced, and it makes a huge difference. So from now on, if you're trying to study for your MCAT, please stop saying, I'm going to study for the MCAT versus I'm going to practice for the MCAT. For example, say you have, you know, um, so let you know what, start with a story. So I know someone, right, who was studying for the MCAT, I believe they studied for about, they took two months for the MCAT, right? They spent maybe six weeks going through like the test books, you know? Um, I think at the time they were using maybe Kaplan or Exam Crackers, I can't remember which one it was, or Princeton Review maybe, is that what it's called? Doesn't matter, the point is they spent six weeks, you know, and you know how the MCAT books are scheduled into like, you know, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, bio, biochem, um, all that stuff, yeah? They spent about six weeks reading through all those books, you know, making notes and going back and forth between those. And then right before the exam, they took an exam test, practice test, you know, completely bombed it. And then because they already scheduled the MCAT, they had no choice but to take it afterwards, yeah? And so they took the exam, completely bombed the MCAT, right? Now, on the others, in another scenario, I had another friend who ended up taking the MCAT on um, the very first time. They um, didn't do so well on the MCAT. I'm not sure how they studied the very first time, but the point is they did some practicing here and there, like questions in a quest test bank. And they also did, um, you know, typical reading, textbooks, videos, all that. Took the MCAT, didn't do so well, right? They still really wanted to apply that same year. They didn't want to, you know, wait a whole entire year because, you know, when you take the MCAT, you don't get your school back until maybe a month later, unless things have changed since I've last taken it. But you get it like a month later. So they took the exam after studying and practicing or whatever, um, they got a score. They was not happy with the score because they got that score a month later. So they're already a month in without studying, right? Realize that they can. there's no possible way they can get into medical school with that score based off their GPA, their other positive application. So what they did was they said, hold on, when is the last MCAT available for this cycle? The last MCAT available for the cycle was about 10 days from when they got their um, exam date, which they did not, they were not happy with the exam score, right? They said, I want to take this MCAT, the one I just found out that I pretty much failed, I want to take it again, but in 10 days. After a whole month of not studying, what can I do, what should I do? They decided to get a test bank. They bought a test bank in which they were able to just drill in questions and questions and questions over and over and over again. And so they did that for 10 days straight. Well, maybe like nine days straight, because the MCAT was on the 10th day. And boy, by, go, by golly, oh golly, or by me, oh me, whatever the saying is, yeah, um, they saw a significant increase in their score. Significant. And when I say significant, obviously nothing too crazy, but they saw a 10-point increase in their score. And that's a lot. I don't know if, you've, if you, for those who understand the MCAT, a 10-point difference in your score means a lot. And so I'm thinking, how does one score 10 points higher in 10 days when they completely, um, well not bombed the exam, but they didn't do as hot, nice as they wanted to the very first time. It doesn't necessarily make sense, right? Doing practice problems is the one proven way to ace these MCAT exams, even when you get into medical school, your step exams, step one, two, three, your board exams, etc. When I was in medical school, my first year, I was doing, you know, reading, te um, textbooks, videos, teacher class notes, professor notes, all that stuff. And to be quite honest, I was still struggling, yeah? I took some practice, you know, board exams, like step one exams, etc. I was doing terrible, honestly. I was nowhere near the school I wanted. However, 
the moment I stopped doing all that, I stopped looking at textbooks, started doing practice problems, my score significantly changed. I saw a dramatic increase and I realized this is what I should have been doing from the very beginning. You know, nowadays, most medical students, I'll tell you now, most medical students aren't using, um, aren't using textbooks to study, to be honest, they're not. I mean, sorry, textbooks to prepare for the exams. They'll use it initially maybe to study, but generally speaking, they're not using it for, if you had to fraction out how much studying you're doing, nowadays, less than 20% is due textbook. 80% of your preparation for these exams are gonna be using a test bank. Why? Because at the end of the day, these textbooks are not meant to prepare you for exams. They're meant to give you the knowledge. How, how it presents itself in an exam is they don't, they don't really care about that. These um, test banks, right, their whole business, how they make money, how they get you to subscribe to them to pay for their services is based on you being able to pass that exam when they finish their course, right? So think about it this way. If you are not passing the MCAT school, um, if you are not passing the MCAT after taking that course, why would you pay for it again? Why would you recommend it? So they're spending thousands, hundreds of thousands, mil probably millions of dollars into preparing material that will help you pass the exam. These test, test writers for these test banks, they are actually studying the MCAT to know what is commonly asked and finding a way to present it to you so that you understand it. So why would you not use that? That is the number one proven way to pass the MCAT. The more practice questions you do, the more prepared you'll be for the exam, the higher chance you will have of pacing that exam and getting the score you desire.